Hey everybody, so in this video what we're going to talk about is ostriches and their water, keeping it dethawed, how to do that, and what we use to cost efficiently do it, and <laughs> um, keeping a safer, maybe even less fire hazard along with the process. All right, so stay tuned and see what's coming. Hey everybody, so now we're going to talk about what we got. So we used a $13 aerator from Walmart and we hooked up two lines. I probably could have even done a splice off of one if I really needed to, but uh, to get more bang for the buck, just to make sure that we have enough airflow going to the tanks so their water doesn't freeze, we just ran the two lines, really inexpensive. $13 aerator, about 3.4 volt uh, watts, give or take, not very much wattage, it's very quiet. You can't even hear it humming, especially when these guys hum. You can't hear anything over that anyways. Um, so this line we have going down, it's got the airline inside of it. It's just a protective coating just to keep them from pecking at it and tearing it apart. But like you can tell, they like to peck at everything. So if you look in here, you can see the air bubbles. And the air bubbles are going to keep the water moving and keep it from freezing. All right, we also, if you look up and over on this, on the other side, we have the aerator in a bucket down there. And we're going to do a different setup later, but this is what we found to be helpful and efficient at the moment. And we'll get better permanent setups uh, moving forward and definitely for next winter. Um, so that red line you got in there is actually just a covering again. And that is protecting the airline inside so they don't pull at it, pull it apart, and um, have a heyday with it. Uh, we're we're hiding it behind this trim, this wood piece right here. So that line goes inside of there and goes inside of here. We moved it all aside. They could peck at this and start pulling it apart. They haven't yet. I need to put another piece of wood over it. And what that'll do is stop them from um, seeing it and um, having fun with it. Um, so that's that part. We're going to run a garden hose. <laughs> hey, you want to give me a hand too? Huh, Blue? Can you give me a hand? Yeah? All right, high five. So we're going to run a garden hose and um, put foil around it, a heat line on the bottom of it, and tape to keep it all secured together. And we got 80 feet, so the first 30 feet are going to come up to here. We're going to keep this nice and warm. This is actually probably going to be moved lower so we can water out into their buckets. And then we're going to run the rest of the line to the other part of the farm where we have rabbits and quail. We don't really do videos on those since everybody else seems to have those animals and they do a lot of videos. So we're sticking to uh, um, the least common of the animals that we have. Uh, lots of fun. There you are. So. Stay tuned. We're going to show you what those products are, what we plan on using, and um, we'll put links for those as well. Also, when it's done and completed, we'll show you how it looks and how we did that. All right. Hey, everybody. So I'm just going to show you some of the products that we're going to use to keep the water um, heated up to, up to the tanks, but not necessarily heating inside the tanks. Okay, so we're just using typical house heating line. Um, what we got was 80 feet. And right, why we went with 80 feet, even though we only have 30 feet from our source to the ostrich cage is because we have other animals. We got quail and rabbits. Um, so after we get the line heated to them, we're gonna keep going all the way down to the other animals. And that'll allow us to have water outside um, instead of taking jugs in and out. It's a little bit of a pain. So we'll put links down below for the products that we have. The first thing that we have is the heated line. And so this goes on the bottom of your heated line. So we're going to put it on the bottom of actual garden hose. And we're going to attach that hose to the house. 
and then we're going to take it inside to the ostrich pen and where their water is and then keep going um, so this is what we're using uh, we don't get paid for promotions or anything like that this is just what we found for the best price for as many feet that we could get okay um, to wrap that line we are going to use this right here so um, this is going to help keep that uh, heated line not maybe running as often with a little bit of insulation off of this okay and since we don't need the full six inches we took it to the bandsaw and cut it down and that's what we're going to use to wrap around the line like so okay um, with that being said we'll hold it all together with aluminum foil tape uh, which I use a lot on a lot of things that are uh, heated duct lines and things like that it works really well uh, I, I believe better than duct tape and that's one of my best friends so <laughs> but we like this a lot um, so we'll put links into some these products down below we'll hook it all up and show you what our end result is and um, if there's an issue we'll do an update if there's not then we won't but um, all this will also be when it's inside the pen we'll have a cover over it uh, probably wood uh, so the ostriches don't peck at it something shiny something new we all know they like to sh peck at something shiny and new right so we're going to keep that covered so that doesn't create a different issue uh, than the one we're trying to fix all right all right just real quick so here is the electric line it's underneath of it onto the hose and so what I used was electric tape uh, I won't put a link to that that's as common as it is and um, it's any electric tape will work um, it's just gonna hold it together um, also it won't melt through if it does ever get too hot um, one thing about electric tape is really good for that so I didn't use like a scotch tape or even a duct tape it kind of frays away when it gets too warm and doesn't really hold too well so just wrapped it around it's real cheap so I just kept wrapping it this way all the way down the line people some people do just sections but I'm using a flexible hose instead of a hard line so that's why I went with this route and to go over it will be the aluminum foil you'll see all right here's the finished result for the foil it's wrapped tightly around it all the way down did pretty good of course, you had to leave the end open to be able to turn the water on and off through through there. Okay, uh, the other cable is um, camera wire, so don't don't mind that. So that's the end result. And all the way down, we didn't do in the inside of the ostrich cage, um, since it's out of the elements. We're hoping that that'll be enough to just keep the water flowing up to up to that point. So if it doesn't, then we'll go in there and do it then. Uh, so, All right, hey everybody, real quick. Um, there's a secondary reason that we're doing this right now versus later. Um, probably should have done it earlier, actually. But this is what we got. Um, so we have a T that's blocked off with the screw the T that goes to there, which goes to the other water. Um, and this this one goes inside the water. It's got a back flow valve, so water doesn't get inside and go back up the airline. And, you know, very inexpensive um, aerator put in the bottom of the tank to keep the water from freezing. We now have a hole in the bottom, a self-made moments ago. We used our drill with our step down and like that and made the hole and now we're going to put this piece in okay and that's going to allow us to be able to rinse and drain the bucket um, as other waters that you may have have the top and on top on them you're able to rinse those out just by opening them up clean them out put more water in uh, fortunately this doesn't have that and we knew that we were going to have to do it sooner or later um, now being the time for another reason, we'll tell you about that at a different moment. Um, but here's the hose that we're gonna use. We're gonna hook that onto the bottom and that's gonna be our drain hose to kind of just bring it out away from the wall a little and 
be able to do that. Um, make sure you pick up all your plastic pieces, shavings, nail screws, anything that the ostrich would peck at, uh, or even if you don't think he will, they will. Uh, so we just cleaned the floor again and cleaned our matting also. Um, and we'll do other videos on that, how we're using it, why uh, initially we set up for a different age group. But that's what we got. And that's the back covering that goes over that you've seen it on there before. Okay? And so it covers up all the plumbing and everything. Um, we are not doing a um, automatic fill um, yet. We may, but I don't know. Um, we're adding some of their vitamins into their water. So in order to address that correctly, you would also want to know how much water they drink before you add more vitamins in. So you're not over, over giving them too many vitamins, you know, so it's kind of a catch 22. But if we have the water line near close by, we just turn the water on after we know the approximate of what they drink, uh, how many gallons worth. So, okay, here we go.